The United States Air Force and the Russian Air Force are two of the world's most formidable military aviation powers. Their prominence on the global stage naturally casts them as rivals. Yet, while they share the skies, their operational philosophies, strategies, and capabilities reveal stark differences. While size and budget are often the focal points of comparison, the true contrast lies much deeper, shaping how these forces operate, evolve, and even think about air combat. Origins of Power The Foundations of the United States Air Force and United States Air Force the Russian Air Force has the distinction of being the older of the two, tracing its beginnings to 1912 when it was founded as the Imperial Russian Air Service. After the Russian Revolution, the Air Service transformed into the Soviet Air Forces, which focused on sheer numbers and overwhelming force. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, the Russian Air Force underwent significant restructuring, maintaining its focus on territorial defense and power projection. By 2015, the Russian Air Force was integrated into the Russian Aerospace Forces, uniting air, space, and missile defense capabilities under a single command. In contrast, the U.S. Air Force was officially established in 1947, following World War II. However, its roots go back to 1907 when it was part of the Army Signal Corps. Recognizing the growing importance of aviation in modern warfare, the U.S. created an independent branch focused on air superiority global mobility, intelligence, and precision strikes. Today, the United States Air Force operates with cutting-edge technology, backed by the largest military budget in the world, ensuring dominance in any theater of war. Size and resources, numbers that make a difference. The United States Air Force size and budget are unmatched. In 2024, it boasted a staggering $185 billion budget, encompassing operations, maintenance, personnel, and research. This figure alone dwarfs Russia's entire military budget for the same year, which stood at $103 billion. This disparity underscores the United States Air Force's ability to invest in advanced technology and maintain a large, highly capable fleet. When comparing fleets, the U.S. Air Force operated 5,189 aircraft in 2024, while the Russian Air Force managed 3,652. While both forces cover a broad spectrum of mission types ranging from attack to logistics, the difference in their operational capabilities becomes evident upon closer examination. The United States Air Force aircraft are generally more advanced and versatile, reflecting its focus on global power projection. Fighter Jets – The Backbone of Air Superiority Fighter jets form the core of both air forces, but their capabilities differ significantly. The United States Air Force operates 1,442 fighter aircraft, including a highly advanced F-35 Lightning II and F-22 Raptor. These fifth-generation jets boast stealth capabilities, making them nearly invisible to enemy radar and are equipped for multi-role missions, from air-to-air -air combat to ground strikes. The F-35, introduced in 2006, exemplifies this versatility with its cutting-edge design and operational flexibility. Russia's fleet, in comparison, includes 1,188 fighter aircraft with the C-57 as its most advanced model. Marketed as a competitor to the F-35, the C-57 struggles with limitations in stealth technology and radar cross-section, which make it less effective in evading detection. Despite being labeled a fifth-generation fighter, experts argue that it falls short of meeting the standards set by its American counterparts. Bombers, a study in philosophy. Both nations maintain formidable bomber fleets, but their design philosophies diverge. The USAF operates a fleet of 152 bombers, including the iconic B-52 Stratofortress, the stealthy B-2 Spirit, and the supersonic B-1B Lancer. These aircraft represent decades of innovation, with the B-52 still in service after its introduction in the 1950s due to its adaptability. The upcoming B-21 Raider promises to elevate U.S. bomber capabilities further with advanced stealth and performance features. Russia's bomber fleet consists of 125 aircraft, including the 295, Q-160, and 222M. While these models have been upgraded over the years, their origins date back to earlier decades. The 295, introduced in 1956, and the 2160, known as the White Swan, 
lacked the technological sophistication and stealth capabilities of their U.S. counterparts. These differences highlight the United States Air Force focus on innovation, while Russia prioritizes quantity and deterrence. Support and Special Operations – The Unsung Heroes The strength of an Air Force isn't just measured by its fighters and bombers, but also by its support aircraft. The United States Air Force excels in this domain with 684 transport aircraft compared to Russia's 387. The U.S. operates advanced models like the C-17 Globemaster III, C-130 Hercules, and the massive C-5 Galaxy designed to deliver troops and equipment globally. In contrast, Russia's fleet, dominated by older models like the L-76, lacks the same operational range and flexibility. The gap is even more pronounced in aerial refueling capabilities. The United States Air Force operates 522 tanker aircraft, including the KC-135 and KC-46, enabling global operations. Russia, with only 19 tankers, cannot extend its reach to the same extent, limiting its strategic flexibility. In special mission aircraft, the United States Air Force again takes the lead with 237 platforms for reconnaissance, electronic warfare, and command roles. Russia's 75 special mission aircraft pale in comparison, both in quantity and capability. Training and Personnel – The Human Factor Training is another area where the United States Air Force surpasses the Russian Air Force. U.S. pilots log an average of 147 flying hours annually, often aiming for 180 or more to meet NATO standards. In optimal conditions, some pilots even exceed 240 hours. These hours, combined with high-fidelity simulator training, prepared U.S. pilots for complex, multi-role missions. In contrast, Russian pilots typically log only 100 to 120 flying hours annually, with fighter pilots falling on the lower end of this range. This lack of training time limits their ability to execute advanced tactics, putting them at a disadvantage in real-world combat scenarios. The difference extends to the size of their forces. In 2024, the United States Air Force employed nearly 320,000 active duty personnel, compared to fewer than 200,000 in the Russian Air Force. This larger workforce necessitates more training platforms such as the T-6 Texan II and T-38 Talon, further enhancing the United States Air Force readiness. Doctrine and Strategy – A Clash of Visions the United States Air Force and Russian Air Force follow doctrines that reflect their broader national strategies and ambitions. The United States Air Force doctrine revolves around achieving air superiority, executing precision strikes, and maintaining a global reach. Peace principles are not limited to defense but extend to shaping the international geopolitical environment to align with U.S. interests. This approach allows the United States Air Force to operate flexibly and decisively, ensuring dominance in various theaters of war. The seamless integration of fighters, bombers, and support aircraft ensures that every element of the force contributes to a coordinated, multi-domain operational strategy that can dismantle even the most sophisticated enemy defenses. In contrast, the Russian Air Force is primarily oriented toward regional defense, focusing on protecting Russian borders and maintaining influence over former Soviet territories. Thanks for watching, folks. Now that you're armed with the knowledge of how the United States Air Force soars and the Russian Air Force sputters, remember one controls the skies and the other, well, they're working on it. If you enjoyed this hair battle breakdown, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share because the only thing faster than an F-22 is you smashing that button. See you next time and remember, the sky's not the limit, it's just the beginning.